Does anyone actually watch these videos for workout tips? I highly doubt it, so yeah, I'm just going to go ahead. <laughs> Alright guys, welcome back to your sixth UDK tutorial, and in this tutorial, as promised, I'm going to be finishing up these viewport buttons, what they do, and how we can use them. So the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is this lock viewport button. Now let me go ahead and show you guys this using an example. If I switch over to one of these wireframe modes and select one of these, let me go ahead and select this dome right here. Whenever I select one of these objects in any of the viewports and I hit home, watch what happens to all these other viewports when I hit home. It's going to go ahead and snap to that object. This one now shows the dome, this one now shows the dome, this one now shows the dome. So let me go ahead and take one of these and move it around. Say, you know, I'm working in this side view, which is the top left, and I want to, you know, I want to concentrate on this right here. And I'm going to be working with another model down here, but I want to keep this side view concentrated on this thing, whatever the heck it is. I don't even want to say what it looks like. But anytime I want to lock this view into place, I'm going to go ahead and lock this viewport. Now, check it out. Anytime, uh, you know, we move around, we're working, yada, yada. Uh, this is nice, doing a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Say we want to work on uh, this object right here, we're going to go ahead and hit home, and all those other viewports are going to snap to this object except this one where we locked. So basically, locking a viewport does exactly like, well, it's pretty self-explanatory. It takes a view and it locks into place and allows you to work with models in different views while keeping that same view. Self-explanatory, right? So now with that being said, let me switch over to lit mode and let me go ahead and ooh, this is kind of a nice view frame up here actually. Now let me talk to you guys about camera speed and that's this button right here. Again, I know I'm skipping these but level streaming and post process volume previous are different topics. We're not even anywhere near uh, that advanced topic yet. So let me talk to you guys about camera speed. Camera movement speed is this little container, I guess it's a container of water. Again, this real time and the icon for camera movement speed, I don't know who's designing the icons for these, but it's like, <laughs> I think this is their first job and probably their last because they make no sense to me. So this jug of water basically goes from empty to all the way full. And when it's all the way full, your camera is moving fastest. So for example, you see where my camera is right now? Say for example I wanted to work on this dome so I needed to move my camera over there. So go ahead hold down your left button and scroll up. Okay scroll up and scroll up. You know what it's going to take like an hour and a half for me to get over to this dome. So what I want to do is I want to increase the camera speed. Now check it out. Whenever I'm whoa I got over there in like half a second. So that's basically what camera speed allows you to do. If we go ahead and have our jug of water empty, whenever we scroll, our mouse moves really slow and our camera is moving really slow. But whenever we have this all the way to the top, it moves really fast. I usually like to keep it somewhere either there or there, like halfway or three quarters full. And by the way, answer this. Is the glass half full or half empty? Hmm, I'll let you decide. But right here, it's definitely all the way full. So that's what camera movement does. And the last thing I want to talk to you guys about is probably the easiest thing, and that's tear off floating copy. It basically, well, just click it and you're going to see what happens. It basically it takes this window or view and it tears it off in a new window. Again, there's nothing else even to explain in that. That's all it does. And, uh, you know, that's all I have to say about that. I guess that's all I have to say about that. That's my Forrest Gump impression. <laughs> Pretty bad Forrest Gump impression, but well, there it is. So anyways, uh, there you go. That's all I have to cover for this, uh, whatever the heck it's called, uh, viewport toolbar. And again, these things I didn't cover yet, we're going to be covering those. Just I got to teach you guys some techniques before we you know, jump into level streaming and stuff like that. So now that we have that covered, we're ready to move on to our next topic. What it is, I don't know yet because I don't have a tutorial outline. But trust me, whatever it is, it's going to be awesome. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.